Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right. So uh, I've got hey, somebody from the United States in this session of, of wines. Yeah, actually, none of it was from the United States. So I've been, I've been like holding off on this one for I don't know why. I just like every time I'm like, yeah, I'll eventually review it. I'll eventually review it. I have two wines from this, from this winery, but I'm doing one wine at a time. So I'll do the other wine, I guess, at some point. But I've had this wine for a long time. And uh, I don't remember exactly when I bought it, but I've had it in-house for a while. So this is the 2013, uh, there's the name and all that there, but this is their like the cool artwork. The Brian Benson Cellars 2013 Neapolitan Pussycat. It is a blend of 60% Grenache, 30% Syrah, 10% Moved from Paso. I love Paso wines. Um, I bought this, I paid $34 through Underground Cellar, and this was... Oh my God, probably like two, probably three years ago at least. And uh, they said the value was 55. When I went to the website, the website has it valued at $35 for a library release. So I don't know if it, originally, if it was originally 55 bucks and Brian's just trying to make some cash because he's got some left over. But anyway, I'm not saying that Somebody's not telling the entire truth, but something didn't add up when I was researching things. Funny how the internet reveals stuff. Very likely it was originally 55 bucks or in that 50-ish dollar range and the price has dropped because he's trying to trying to sell his inventory off. So and I'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> so who is who is this guy? So his grandfather and father were, and they are, father's still alive, winemakers from Paso. He grew up uh, around wine. In 1995, he made his first wine at his father's winery when he was 13. Uh, he was involved with a lot of winery stuff when he was like, I think starting at like five years old. So, I mean, he's been, you know, he's been involved and really into winemaking for since he was a little kid. Uh, it was a Cabernet Sauvignon. He became the full-time assistant at his dad's winery in 2000. 2001, he started to branch out on his own. And he made a Cabernet Sauvignon. He made a Zinfandel. It was also the year uh, he lost two people that were very close to him, his grandfather and then a really close friend of his, friend of his named Ryan Bockett. Um, and his label, so it's, it says it has praying, praying angels and um, it says his label honors him using two praying angels. So when I looked at the logo, I mean this label itself doesn't have it, but when I looked at the logo, it has looked like, looked like one angel wing. So I'm not really sure where that came from. This is from like the website. Uh, 2005, he moved to making his wine at Denner Vineyards, which is a gravity-fed winery. 2015, moved to an area called Tin City. It's 20 acres with 22 boutique wineries, a brewery, a distillery, ice cream shop, pa pasta factory, and a restaurant. Now, things may have changed since this was written. There may be more or less and other things there, but that's what was listed. Uh, the, the list of grapes, everything was co-fermented. So that's very like Rhone like to co-ferment this stuff. Uh, the blend does change each year though. There's only, uh, seems to be GSM most of the time, but there's only been three vintages of this wine. Um, let's see the last, oh, I'm sorry. The last vintage for any wine on the website is 2017. It was just a Chardonnay. Whereas if you look at other vintages, there's a wide range of wines that were made. So my feeling is he's been out of business. He went out of business sometime in 2019. Uh, there's a video that's no longer available. Like you click, there's supposed to be a video of, of him and it's no longer available. And there are some, there are a couple of Yelp reviews. I don't really like to use Yelp very often, but in this case, 
it's like has the most recent uh, anything on there. And you have a lot of people say the wine's awesome, but then you have some people that are complaining that uh, Brian has been unresponsive to emails, texts, and phone calls, and this is all like in 2019. So my feeling is that, whoops. Hey, at least I started this then, other than like two episodes ago where I never used it. Sorry about that. Um, I mean, the iPhone audio quality will be okay, but it's probably, yeah, anyway. Um, so my feeling is that he maybe went back to like making wine with his dad or with somebody else because I really can't find too much about him. So let's see what, let's see what this, you know, wine is going to taste like, you know, seven ish, six and a half ish years old. Um, but like a GSM basically. So yeah, I am excited. I love GSMs. And if he's doing co-ferment, you know, I'm not saying it's like a Roan Ranger, but I think the Roan, Ran Roan Rangers came from Paso. Like they, they kind of started the whole Roan Ranger or the Roan movement. So let's check it out. So right off the bat, like great red and black fruits, a little bit of cocoa on it. And that's before I even swirled it. You can see a little browning in the color. So you definitely are getting some oxidation on this. In some ways, it smells a little bit like that Kik Francos, but not as spice-driven. There's a little more earth to this, but the fruit is really ripe on this. It's really rich and ripe on it. Look, you can get you get some vanilla. So there's definitely oak aging going on here, like newer oak aging. So Brian, brother, if you're still around and you're happen to fall upon this video, it's really good wine, man. I hope you're still in business. I hope there's just like a hiccup going on. I mean, I know like like right now in April when I'm recording this of 2020, a lot of businesses are closed or closed for now. So I get that. But I mean, as far as like just in general, man, I hope you're still making some wine. I just, you know, hope you're still making wine somewhere, even if it's not your own label. Because this is freaking delicious. So it's it's like a very big contrast to what I just had. You know, I've had all this old world wine and, and like really kind of unusual old world wine. And I just kind of like, it's kind of like a shock to the system that I'm having like a really traditional United States Paso GSM. So, but it's super delicious. Very fruit forward. I wouldn't call it sweet, but you definitely taste the fruit to it. Um... I don't think it's really high alcohol, but it feels like a, it feels like it's. Oh wow, it's fifteen five. Brian you did a great job integrating that alcohol. Now, granted, it's six plus years old, so the alcohol might just by in just by nature of age is being more integrated into this. But I knew it was a higher alcohol wine, but I thought more like a fourteen ish, like fourteen and a half maybe. But yeah, so if this was really originally a $55 bottle of wine, it is absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. For $34, $35. So listen, there'll be a link down below for his website. And then um, I'll have a link on Underground Cellar too, just to kind of see what Underground Cellar is all about. Because I buy a ton of wine from them. And I actually have a ton of wine coming from them. I, I won't go through the details, but I basically ask for all my wine. Except for like, I think I like six bottles left. But, um, uh, and I'm still waiting like two cases worth it. It's a long story. I won't go through it. I still think they're a great concept, but yeah, I kind of, I asked for all my wine basically. Uh, and the idea was to try to get it before the, the advanced exam, but that didn't happen. And, um, that's fine because most of the wines I have from them are not testable. I just wanted them. In hindsight, it was probably a good idea. I ordered, I, I asked for all of them, but they're still collecting the wines. Let's just put it that way. That's why I haven't gotten the last two cases yet. But yeah, if you can find this, especially go to his website, buy it for 35 bucks because it's absolutely worth it for 35. And I know, trust me, again, this time, this what's going on right now, granted it's a month 
you're going to see this a month after I recorded it. So hopefully by that point, things are getting better, not just in the United States, but worldwide with, with uh, COVID-19. And, you know, and you can afford to drop 35 bucks plus whatever shipping's involved. But yeah. Really good. It has aged really well. Good job, Brian. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. As always, you can click the links above to frame me up. There'll be links below, like I already said, to Brian's Winery and Underground Cellar. Of course, PayPal link below if you want to send some ducats my way. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.